today we'll be making a sculpture. A sculpture is different from what we've done before because it is not flat. It is something that you can view and enjoy by even walking around it. We're going to be using the word and vocabulary of texture. Raise your hand if you know what texture means. Okay, turn and talk to a partner. What do you think this sculpture might feel like? What is its texture? Texture is not always things that you can feel. For instance, this image is very flat because it's just a digital image and someone drew it. But the way we look at it and the way it makes us feel, it's almost kind of like hills. So it still has texture, even though it's something that we can't necessarily reach out and feel. Raise your hand. What are some other textures that you can think of? Today we'll be using something called clay. We're gonna be using air hardening clay, so it's not something that I have to put into an oven and cook. It's something that will dry overnight. So this is a project that we will only be doing for today because it will be dry by next time that I see you. Clay is a special kind of soil from the earth, which is created when rocks start to hit each other under the earth and they start turning powdery and then they get mixed with water and they saturate. So it's kind of like a very thick mud. When clay is cleaned and refined, it makes an exceptional material for pottery. Pottery is like bowls and dishes and things that we use. Oftentimes, they used a technique called coiling, which we will try today, to create their works of art. Pottery is a very prominent part of Texas culture because the indigenous peoples or the Native Americans that lived here definitely used pottery to create the tools that they needed for life, but also decorated them as a way of art. However, I want you to know that clay was not only used for pottery, but had many other purposes as well. So I'm gonna be coming around and giving y'all clay. Um, there's not a really good way for me to know that everyone's getting the same amount, so I just do the same thing. I open it up, I reach in, I grab just a handful, just like this, and then this is the clay that you get. Take a small little bit off, so maybe like a third of the clay out, and then put the big part to the side. I want you to smash this down into a little pancake, and then I want you to press on the sides and make it look like a circle. Like this. Once you have your circle, go ahead and start flattening it out a little bit more, but this time on your tray. It should be pretty flat. This is gonna be the base of our pinch pot. So we need something to the, you know, for the things, whatever we're gonna put in here, keys, pens, I don't know. Um, it needs to have something on the bottom so that it becomes a bowl. So that's what this is gonna be. Now you need to take your big part and I just want you to start rolling it. So roll it like a snake, just like the kindergarten and preschool days, just roll it out as if it were Play-Doh. Um, roll it out as long as you can. So I'm just gonna keep on rolling. Um, if you look closely, you can see maybe some sides are a little bit thicker than others. If you're seeing that some sides are thick, you may want to give them a little bit more love and kind of make it even. So even though it's getting pretty long here, I'm just going to keep on going. I'm going to go until it is about the thickness of a pencil. So when it starts looking like um, as skinny as a pencil, that's when we know that we're done. So it's a little hard for me to hold the camera and do this at the same time. But now we need to start coiling our pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a little bit of it down on top of that uh, circle base that we made. And this is called coiling. So it's coiling because it's kind of like wrapping this snake all the way around and it's gonna get taller and taller. So now there's kind of a two story effect. So that coil is just gonna go right on top of the next one and it's gonna coil all the way around and you're just gonna keep on going. You can give it a little pressure as you go. That way it's sticking, but you're just gonna coil it up. It might get pretty tall here. 
and that's okay. Should look something like that. Start pinching the sides. This is very gentle, don't pinch hard, but just kind of pinch those sides together um, so that they stick. It would be a shame if this dried and then everything kind of fell apart. And then once you kind of have everything pinched, then we're gonna worry about the sides and get, getting rid of this coil look. We're gonna keep the insides looking that way, but we're gonna get rid of that on the outside. So now it's time to start smoothing out the sides. You're gonna need a cup of water and I'll have those out for you. Now you're just gonna dip your fingers in. Please don't saturate and get your whole hand wet. You just need a couple of wet fingers. And what you're gonna do, and I'm gonna get my other fingers wet too, is you're just going to kind of gently massage those coils out so you can see that they're getting smoother and smoother. I'm also gonna go over the top as well and smooth out the rim of the bowl. That makes it look a little bit neater. You can still go back and pinch and make it look neat. That's totally fine. But you can see the difference here. See that I've smoothed one side out and then the other side's coiled. So you're gonna do this kind of smoothing technique all the way around. So you just need to get your hands a little bit wet and then find a spot that needs some extra love and go ahead and start smoothing it out. Now you don't wanna make these walls too thin. If you pinch too hard, it'll make the walls thinner and thinner. We're gonna add some texture to this coil pot. This next step is optional, but it's something that I like to do before I'm done. I like to take my finger with a little bit of water on the end and go around the edges. This makes them look a little bit more clean, a little bit more polished. And then I'm gonna take this needle and we're going to kind of go back and forth on the edges. So what you're probably seeing is it's looking nice and polished and it looks more professional that way. So it kind of makes the edges look a little bit better, a little bit stronger. And I like the way it makes my coil pot look, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it here. 
So now that I'm done, it's time for me to uh, place this in a spot in the room that is very safe. So right now I'm looking at the back green counter. Um, you should see a tray back here. Uh, inside the tray is where I want you to place your beautiful coil pot. So just gently pick it up off the tray, be very, very careful. And then we are going to set it, make sure that your uh, last first and last initial is on it, and then place it inside of the tray back here so that it is safe for next time. Once you are completely done, I encourage you to raise your hand and go outside to wash your hands because your hands might be a little bit dry. We'll use a wet wipe at the end of class to clean our tables and our hands as well, but if you need, if you feel like your hands are kind of drying out because of all the clay we're using, that's totally fine if, if you um, ask for permission to go to the restroom. I don't mind if you wash your hands out there. Um, once you are completely done, clean your area, make sure that your tray is put up, and then I have some activities over here that you can choose from. Keep your rubbing plates that you used out in front of you as you work today. That will be a reminder that you need to clean it because as you can see, we got a little bit of clay on there and that is no bueno for me. So to help me out, I need y'all to use your wet wipe at the end of class to clean your wet wipe the best you can. The wet wipe will usually get all that clay up. So look, there's still a few more kind of little bits. So you might have to use your elbow grease, use your muscles and get that off to make it nice and clean for the next person.